Playing the greatest. Playing the greatest hits. Welcome back, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, you know my first guest because he's Steve Carell. Happy birthday to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're, you're very kind to be here. They asked me, who would you want as a guest? I'm like, oh, Steve Carell would be fun. I know he's in town for doing Broadway. I'm like, we'll ask. And I said yes instantly. It's so lovely. So lovely. You're one night off to be here. Oh, my Just gosh. I wouldn't miss it. slum it with your old He's Chicago. the best guy. <laughs> That took you almost 25 seconds. <laughs> I think I owe you an apology, because the last time you were here, which was about uh, 18 months ago, uh, you had just celebrated your 60th birthday, and I don't think maybe uh, I was as gracious as I could have been. <laughs> and Jim, we have a clip. <laughs> hey, uh, speaking of uh, the March of Time, happy birthday. Thanks. I just... <laughs> Thanks for bringing it up. Fantastic. <laughs> I'm happy to. I'm happy. I bring it up just because I think it was like, oh, we're basically the same age, right? Yeah. We're basically okay, the same you're basically the same age, but you're 60 now. Yeah, I am. You're 60. I am. Yep. And I don't want to brag, but I'm in my mid 50s. Really? <laughs> 58. That's somewhere in the middle. That's. That's 58. That's late mid. That's late mid, exactly. But it's not yeah. sick. Did you need supplemental oxygen to come out here or a anything little like bit. that? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, no, I'm doing kind of fine. Brain? I'm sure. Well, mm. please accept my apology. <laughs> I, I didn't realize. I don't know. What? What? I don't know, man. <laughs> that was pretty hard. <laughs> Is there anything about being 60 that you like, or being? Oh, you're 61 now. Oh my God, what am I saying? Uh, uh, but um. <laughs> I, I'll mm. tell you what I like about it, and that is slowly my age is catching up with my physique. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah, I don't have a problem. What, what are you going to do? Let it go. Right? Yeah. Like, you just do it. You get old, whatever. Who well, cares? I'm thrilled that you're back in New York and you're here because everybody knows you're a big movie and TV star, but now, of course, you are a thespian. You know, you've done, you've done, you've done a lot of stage work. I remember you with the Goodman and. Of course, we were on stage together. But now you are making your Broadway debut playing the titular role in Uncle Vanya at the Vivian Beaumont Theater at Lincoln Center. This, of course, I love this. This right here is the moment. That's the moment at which you're going to close up. That's when Thanos snaps his fingers in Vanya. <laughs> That's yeah. why it's so sad. That's, That's why it's so sad. Yeah. yeah. Um, do, how did this come about? Did you just wake up one day and you went, you know what? Time for some Chekhov. <laughs> you know what? I had always, it's, it's a dream, obviously, sure. to perform on Broadway. And uh, I got a call, and they were interested in having me play this part. And I'd, I'd waited because I didn't want to do it when my kids were little. I didn't, because it's, an, it's a, sure. a big time commitment. Yeah. And you have Mondays off, so you can't go back and forth. There's no going home to visit. Right. Um, so it just seemed like the right time to do something like this. And it's been thrilling, really fun. People don't realize because it's, you know, it's Russian and it's Chekhov and it yeah. sounds very serious. The beautiful stories, beautiful characterizations really are like relevant to our present human heart. But Chekhov's also funny, which people don't understand. He is. He described this as a comedy in the first act and a tragedy by the fourth act. But there's a lot of humor in it. Why do you think, because Chekhov and Ibsen, you know, over 100 years ago they were doing yeah. this stuff. Why do you think it's still, it still feels like it could have been written yesterday? It, Why? it really does, because, well, the themes are very relevant today. You know, the ecology and climate change and women's rights, you know, all of these things that, that at that time might not have been on everybody's lips, but now they certainly are. And he was way, way ahead of, and he also is very relatable because he writes characters that are relatable in this day and age and family situations that are relatable in this day and age. Um, as I was saying before, you and I were on stage in Chicago doing live theater for years yeah. together at Second City, which is 350 seat house, yeah. like 325, something like that. A nice yeah. size house, but but a cabaret seating and everything. Right. Um, how does that? Like, what's this experience now to be back in front of a live audience for the first time in a long time? I imagine. How does that compare to like 
the, I mean, obviously the Broadway audience doesn't have cocktail waitresses. <laughs> right, yes. Yeah. I mean, it's a discerning audience to be sure, but it was remarkably similar in, in terms of getting on stage. Do they yell out suggestions? They do. I love it. <laughs> Proctocologist. <laughs> No, they, but but similar just in terms of like that muscle memory of being on stage and mm -hmm. and doing it again. It had been many, many years since I've done anything on stage. My question is, when are you going to do Broadway? <laughs> and when are when are we going to do a Broadway show? What would we do? I think we do the odd couple. <laughs> but but it, here's my thought. But we both play Felix. And John Stewart plays Oscar. <laughs> and we switch off yeah, playing Felix night be, night. We, Every time we make an entrance. Yes, it's, it's a different a, one. It's a different one. <laughs> Somebody right now is saying, that might work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, do you, I'd pay for that. Do you, uh, do you, uh, I love doing the set. You know, back at Second City, back in the day, every night we would do the show every night, a uh, two hour show written through improvisation, and then we do an hour improv every night. That set, before we want anything could happen, what were some of your favorite asks? What was your favorite thing about doing that? I mean, did you, did you love that, first of oh, all? Oh, I loved it. Uh, yeah, I loved doing the set, partly because you could go down in flames, but everyone would support each other. And I know we always had this game. If a, if a scene, if an improv was not going well, it, the, 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 the mark of shame was to get off. Mm -mm. We, you, it was stay on and go down with the ship. Sure. And you gotta that, love the bomb. Love the bomb. And yes. that was part of the fun. Like, Even oh, if the stage this... manager pulled the lights, yeah. when they come back up, stay He's going, there. yeah. I go, was that an eclipse? What was that? <laughs> no, we have, to, we have yes. to keep torturing this audience with this terrible improvisation. And you would imagine that you do that for a while, eventually it gets good again. No. Never. No. We have to take a quick break, uh, but don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Steve Carell, everybody.